Hello, everybody. Welcome to SNGR, Sexy Nerd Galactic Radio. And today, uh, considering it's the holidays, I know a lot of you are saying, ah, it's fucking November. It's the beginning. But I'm like the dollar store. As soon as Halloween's over, I'm like, all right, get out of here. It's Christmas time, bitches, if you like it or not. So anyway, um, it is a season to be merry, but uh, for every person who's merry, there's a person who's grouchy, grinchy, and scroogey. And uh, my guest today is one of my best friends, Marco Vaccaro, who is all three of those things. He, uh, he, Marco, you're not a big fan of Christmas, right? Exactly. I hate Christmas. <laughs> Why do you hate Christmas exactly? Why do I hate Christmas exactly? Can you ask me a better question? Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. I, that's exactly why I hate Christmas. I'm just that negative. There's just like uh, something about Christmas that just get that, that gets my jingle bells broken. Okay. I think it's like, um, it's because it comes too early now. I'm, I'm just going to like throw out a bunch of excuses. And when I come across one, I really do like, I'll make that the reason why I don't like Christmas. So I'll start right now. Like it is what now November fifteenth, and now the fucking Christmas music's coming on, and uh, people are putting up their decorations. Their I just don't like Christmas trees because when I was four years old, like my dad really overdid it with one decoration on one side of the tree. So while I was watching my favorite movie, the tree actually fell on me, <laughs> really, and spilled coffee. Yes, yeah, actually, it's, it's you're really drinking sorry. coffee as a child. <laughs> no, fuck? no, the coffee was on a coffee table. That's where it should be, but the tree knocked it off the coffee table, spilling it on me. It was like fucking hot coffee. I think I was seven or something. It was like before the tens, you know. Okay. Really? So it, it was um, a situation where you like, and, and you know, at that point, I really liked Christmas. I'm like, yay, Christmas movies, and you're opening up your presents, and you're like always somewhat disappointed. So when you saw so, Revenge at Fantasia, like I felt the pain. Ah, okay, I got you. All right. <laughs> so I, so no, well, I knew I I was getting tree flashbacks like of Vietnam. You don't understand, like when you're like fucking like three feet tall, and you're lying down, so the tree's extra high. We always would get like something like a seven foot tall tree and then the tree just topples kind of forward and like it was one of those situations where i just happened to turn around and the tree <laughs> along with all the bells the bells and balls and all that shit falling first how old were you i was six to seven. Oh, so this is like one of your first memories yeah my first after all the moon all, after all the booze and moonshine and moonshine yeah, like this it, is like what stands out in your childhood it, it, this is all that stands out in my childhood i yeah. i try to erase that memory but instead, I erased every memory but that. So that's yeah. a conflict in my life. Uh, by the time this reaches the Internet, it should probably be an appropriate amount of time before Christmas and all this shit. Mm -hmm. But um, no, no, it pisses me off when the dollar stores and the malls kind of like kick Halloween out before their lease is over. Yeah, there's a, a large predominant uh, amount of Christmas horror movies. Like one of the first ones was uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. And this movie was banned from theaters like five minutes after it came out. Because basically it's this, no, it was not just a trailer, but there's a poster of Santa Claus holding an axe going down a chimney mm -hmm. in a movie theater next to, uh, you know, I don't know, Land Before Time or some shit earlier than that. Mm -hmm. But basically the synopsis in the movie is this little kid and his family. Um, the kid's scared of Santa Claus and being on the naughty list. And then they see Santa Claus on the side of the road and they're like, oh, let's stop it for Santa. It turns out to be some crazy lunatic dressed up as Santa. And, not and only, he shoots the dad, starts to ra try to rape the mom. The no, mom, he rapes the mom. Oh, he does rape like, the mom. Okay. She, she's like totally ripped out nude on no, the no, middle of the street. Like he's not like thrusting it. She's about to. Then she slaps him in the face. Then he starts punching her like mm -hmm. crazy. I think I think this I, like I'm disgusting. My mem my imagination and memory of things. When someone told me about deliverance, it was way worse in my mind than it actually was. Mm. I'm like they're they're just having a roast with this guy's ass in my mind. Like you know when someone described deliverance to me, yeah. And then it's even worse because it looks like a documentary of some like fat guy getting chased around by a hick, and then that scene yeah. still don't, don't this bring back season that scene. to be jolly. Fucking. I saw a deliverance during Christmas. Nice and Clockwork Orange. So getting back to Silent Night, Deadly Night. Uh, fuck. So the kid, he scares Santa Claus and he has a reason to be like this guy. Fucking kills the mom, kills the dad. The baby brother's crying in the backseat. He's in an orphanage, and I've always kind of feared nuns, and this movie, like, it's fucked up to watch this movie, then Sister Act right in a row. Like, your perception of nuns is totally fucked up. Like, like Whoopi Goldberg? Yeah, like, don't trust them, Whoopi. 
So that, this, well, she she teaches him how to sing. If Whoopi Goldberg was yeah. none in that movie, I think that kid wouldn't have turned into the psychopath. I yeah. So this kid, like, you need a little Whoopi. Not in only life. is he traumatized by Santa Claus, but around Christmas time, this nun and this girl, or I think it was like two people. I don't know. Two young adults were having sex in a room, and the head nun finds them, and he's and she says naughty, and she starts beating him and shit like that. Like this movie's fucked up, and this nun really perpetuates this terrifying demeanor his whole life like this really this mother mary superior or some shit anyway so eventually the nice nun gets him a job at this toy store where he eventually they make him be the fucking mall santa claus and in the santa claus suit he sees two people have sex which i've always found weird because there's this kind of like gino like hey bro hey you got nice tits and you think that this other girl that works with him would find him totally she would repulsive. have a little more self-respect. And then to, she like, has sex with him anyway. Yeah. And then during the sex, he like the Santa just flips his lid and he's like, you're naughty. And it starts killing everybody. So anyway, I'm like nine years old when I see this movie. Mm-hmm. Close to the traumatic age that he saw the parents die and all that stuff. And uh, it didn't warp me. I was just really happy to see those boobs. I think you, yeah. you should have saw the movie in 3D. It would have fucked you up a little more. Yeah. Yeah. 3D always fucks people. All right. So that, that's Silent Night, Deadly Night. Like Thanks of the for fir- talking about it, though. I really yeah. <laughs> forgot yeah, it. Yeah. I was drunk when I saw it. And yeah. thank, thank God for Dean. He was like really narrating like what's happening. Like the importance of these Christmas horror movies. The first fucking Canadian horror movie to really be mm-hmm. nationally distributed was Black Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never seen Black Christmas, the original. I just saw the fucked up remake with all the inbreeding. Yeah, it, the the remake is also pretty forgettable. Like, um, I have uh, nothing really to say. Other than, like, uh, didn't the, um, one of the killings have something to do with cookie cutters? I have no idea. Uh, it's something on the skin. I got to stop watching movies drunk. Yeah, but I tell really me. A- can't, I'm the worst reviewer in the world if you can, just, can consider me one. I'll tell you about the original. I have to watch it again. But there's a few There's a few good little... Uh, Don't you love it when we're, we're prepared? Yeah. Wasting everybody's time. It's a good thing yeah. this shit's free. I re- yeah, I should have I should have really uh, not take tried to take that dump and read Playboy instead of like, <laughs> fucking... I should have done my homework. Um, yeah, Black Christmas is a good movie, and I'll just like fucking bombard you with like little like half-ass facts that are probably not true about the movie. Um, it's directed by Bob Clark, who also did a, a unconventional Christmas movie, fucking um, Christmas Story. You know the one with the, the kid with the BB gun? Yeah, I. Then, you know that to this day, you can call me a fucking loser poser, but I have not even seen. Well, check story. that movie out because yeah. it's um, basically if you're a How I Met Your Mother fan, there's like a lot of elements. You know, it's a person telling their life story, and like um, there's a point where the kid says fudge, but he's like, I didn't really use that word. All right. Also, he also directed Porky's. So, um, oh, I love Porky's. Yeah. American Pie before American Pie. Exactly. Almost the same thing. A bunch of guys trying to get laid before they graduate. Just the only thing is, Porky's just feels fucking real. I yeah, think Porky's movies from, was way more raw. It, it, yeah, because, well, it has like all that like uh, racist shit that's in between and yeah. all that stuff. Like, there's some serious elements in Porky's because, like, a, a actual member of their little gang gets fucking beaten up. Can you imagine, um, American Pie if Stifler got the shit kicked out of him <laughs> by a bunch of skinheads, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, w- 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 how, how the fuck would teenagers handle that and stuff? Porky's is like is like your test of manhood, you know, it's yeah. like when your dad pulls you aside, son, you're going to fuck this pussy mm-hmm. or you can't eat supper tonight Pizza. but black christmas yeah. pre- does it predate halloween like- it does okay. actually it's a i'm not gonna like go on record on this but i remember hearing um it's, it, it's influenced movie. it is influenced uh, halloween is influenced the on black uh, christmas, black christmas. Okay. um legitimately i think john carpenter i'm um, not don't quote me on this was like saying this is like a illegitimate continuation of black christmas because black christmas like halloween features one of those first person uh stalker scenes you know where the like the guy goes through the window and he's like going all over the stuff just like in halloween okay. and like you don't see who the killer is like black christmas is actually a very very scary and a freaky movie in terms of not gory but a movie that's suspenseful margo kidder's so, in that isn't she she is fucking awesome in that movie because okay. like, she's like that like girl there well you know this is the 70s so it's like all women's lib and she's the one that's like i'll fucking not wear a bra fuck you and i'll fuck anybody i want yeah, uh, Margaret you know? Peter's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a, a quick side note, and you can see this on the season zero page uh, when she says uh, Margaret Peter talks about Superman. 
um, in Superman 2, when they replaced Richard Donner of, you know, Goonies and fucking uh, Lethal Weapon fame, like an mm-hmm. amazing... They, they replaced him with... Uh, they replaced him with Richard Lester because Richard Lester was threatening to sue the company because they owed him like a couple of million dollars for other movies that he uh, that this they being Warner Brothers or no not Warner Brothers this okay. is like like as or as the producers she, of the movie. as she put it the producers Excuse were a me. bunch of crooks and they owed Richard Lester a couple of million dollars and he sued them in like six countries mm-hmm. and they won and he won each time so the most logistic thing Donner they're like oh you're going over fucking budget. And stuff like that. And they replaced Richard Donner with Richard Lester. Mm-hmm. And um, Richard Lester couldn't give a fuck about Superman. And that, and you could really tell. When you watch Superman 2 and 3, he does not love the character Richard Donner. Le- Lester lo- Lester yeah. did part 3 as well? Yeah, I think so. <sighs> what a piece of shit. Exactly. Richard Lester like directs the Beatles movies. <laughs> so it's like, hi, look, I'm Superman. I'm Lex Luthor. <laughs> Yeah. I have no clue, but I think I want to see that version of Superman. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, because uh, fucking Lennon would be Lex Luthor. So, all right, long story short, that's why that's how we got the fucking job. And he didn't give a shit about Superman and Richard. But but the thing is, she wouldn't she wouldn't like not say anything in the press and all that stuff. She's like, I think this is fucking bullshit. Richard, this this movie's gonna be a catastrophe because Donner is Superman's director and all that stuff. So they wrote her out of Superman three. Mm-hmm. They had her conveniently go somewhere else from mm-hmm. the beginning to the end. So let's get to some things straight. Like, um, did he film that? Richard Donner supposedly filmed a few scenes in Superman they, two. No? Legally, yeah, you know, he filmed three quarters of the movie, mm-hmm. but legally, to say that Richard Lester directed it, they had to reshoot his scenes. And change the dialogue Bull. for it to be legal. That's why there's there's scenes in the hotel room. This is fucking hilarious. This is mm-hmm. a podcast about fucking Christmas. And here we are talking about Superman. Yeah, but he, he yeah, you know, the, the okay. solitude so, takes place in the North. Pole. It all takes place in the North Pole. So scenes like when they're in a hotel room and stuff like that that seem really weak in Superman too. When he it, like where she pretends to I don't know. Basically, there's much more powerful moments. Mm-hmm. I think she fucking shoots him or something. Oh, in, in yeah, like, yeah, uh, the like, Donner version? Yeah, but it's like, but she's like, hey, it's blanks or something like that. Mm-hmm. But he thinks he's been shot and he's Superman, so he can't fucking tell. So he's just like, well, I guess I'm Superman. She's like, ha ha, fake bullets. <laughs> fucking. That's wicked. Yeah. I, I'm trying to th- I remember. Um, I remember just the first time I've watched like Superman, like as a sort of adult and all that stuff. I think it was a hangover day, like, you know on cable you know and like the you know you know movie picks when they show movies and i remember seeing mario puzo that's how name. you fucking saw porkies man yeah it's fucking in midnight and there's this naked guy's ass running by a cop car it was amazing that is a great scene oh i love porkies i have it and i have not opened it in uh porkies I- marathon all yeah. the viewers check out porkies you got some like fucking really funny adolescent humor and mm. shit and sex scenes and uh oh i'm sure samantha from sex in the city plays lassie enough said really yeah well i don't i never watched samantha's the old the old hoary one yeah as but opposed to the other funny. um yeah well i'm really sure that like there is a good percentage out there still to this day who've seen porkies come on like yeah. porkies is a classic it's movie that that the dad will take the son and maybe even the daughter because there are a lot of hot town boys out there too. It's like they need to know the enemy and the enemy is man. And next thing <laughs> you know, girls are looking into the fucking guy's hole. And next thing you know, I don't know. By 2015, there's gonna be an epidemic of guys fucking holes in their shower head. Wall. I'm game back on yeah, topic. Yeah, back to Christmas. Yeah, back to fucking Christmas. <laughs> that all might be edited out. I don't know. That's great though. Yeah. I think. Uh, well, the Richard Donner shit's actually kind of interesting. Um, I think so too. Okay, so. We, yeah. we talked about Richard Donner because of Margot Kidder. Cause she's yeah, in because Black of Margot Christmas. Kidder, and she's in fucking Black Christmas. Exactly. Uh, I still haven't seen the original Black Christmas. I saw it on TV, mm-hmm. but I was kind of like too cool for school at that point where I'm just like, what the hell is this? Don't watch it while sleepy because yeah. uh, it's a movie that takes its time. It's back in the 70s when uh, horror movies actually were scary because you had to use your imagination, yeah. and it took its fucking time to get to the point like a Hitchcock, you know, like in those days, like all like uh, horror and suspense directors were somewhat influenced by Hitchcock. And uh, I I don't know if uh, Bob Clark was a Hitchcock fan or not, but I think 
anybody who's doing a horror movie or a suspense movie where there's a killer killing people would go back to a movie like Rear Window or uh, or Psycho or something to get an idea. Anyways, get it. Uh, that's long winded, but getting yeah, yeah. getting to the point. I'm just saying it has like very long takes, ca- long camera shots, very freaky atmosphere. There are r- creepy moments in this. Uh, a, ba- a dead corpse on a fucking rocking chair with a bag over the head, where a cat is licking the bag. Reminds me of my cat licking bags, not my own bag, or my school bag at one point. Anyways, yeah, Jinx is the type of my, your cat's the type of cat that would totally eat your fucking face if you like died on the floor and yeah. she she eats my face and uh, after while playing I sleep. with it though after yeah. playing with it she's sadistic because I raised her that way she's eating her face like now when you sleep <laughs> she's probably thinking of it okay so cat. I'm sorry that cat will all right hunt so me. Black Christmas was like you know out of all the movies we're gonna talk about this was like more of the most serious one because. Silent Night, Deadly Night is is terrifying in a sense that it's just so wrong. And then Black Christmas is like one of the first slasher movies, especially with a holiday theme. So and yeah, then like like then then came Halloween and then yeah. they did uh then you had Valentine's Day and all like the the other slasher yeah, movies, but they, it was a slasher movie is there, before is there, there was a fucking a horror movie about Easter? Not really. <sighs> I would <laughs> I would love to think of um in some weird parallel universe, Donnie Darko being an Easter horror movie because of that creepy bunny. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that took place in Halloween and in a parallel universe as well. So there's no so, more no. there's no more serious horror movies. Like there's also Christmas Evil, which you and I have never seen. But we watched that. But trailer we just watched the trailer two seconds before we started recording this, and it looked fucking awesome. Yeah, like um, like Santa Claus going down on mommy under the mistletoe and shit. Like really fun, cool. So just to let you guys know. That Christmas Evil, the entire thing, is on YouTube. Black Christmas, the original, and the remake are both on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So if what anything we said today titillates you to want to fucking watch something, check there. But later on, considering none of us have seen Christmas Evil, we can't talk about it too much. Uh, later on, Christmas horror movies are much more satirical these days. Like they're like just uh, like Gremlins probably was one like one of the first ones that really says, hey. Killing people at Christmas is fucking funny. I, I just thought Gremlins is just a blast, regardless if it's a, a Christmas movie or not. I think a lot of times, like I, I seen this in a, some sort of review somewhere else, like where people are questioning, uh, is Die Hard a Christmas movie or not? Oh, dude, that is a whole other level. That's a whole other category yeah. that Jason will kill us if we don't include him. If J Zero doesn't like get included in the talk about christmas movies that are shamelessly set on christmas though if you remove the christmas element it would not affect the story at all that's true like lethal weapon die hard like all these yeah well what's another uh, well we'll go we'll go on that we'll figure it out we'll go we we will google it all right but um if there's uh, anybody listening to this who actually, if anybody listened to this, mm. uh, if you guys have like some fucking favorite horror Christmas movies, because there's a shit ton I haven't seen yet. Mm. Like there's like, I haven't seen all of Santa's sleigh starring Goldberg fucking one? Goldberg. Yay. I've seen some of it. It's not fantastic, but it's funny watching him kill Fran Drescher. It's actually kind of fucked up to say it's like Santa Claus goes around killing Jewish people. <laughs> but especially, yeah. especially Goldberg's Jewish. Yeah. So well, maybe that's oh, that's that's even funnier. That is hilarious. Yeah. That is uh, yeah a Jewish Santa Claus? A Jewish a Jewish Santa. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, but getting back to Gremlins, uh, you and I were you and I were at the blood sh- blood check headquarters, and I was passed out <laughs> on the couch, and we woke up in the morning, and this was around the time Paramount had a bunch of movies that if you paid five bucks or six, whatever, you could go see like this classic movie on the big mm-hmm. screen. And Gremlins was there, and we were almost not going to go. Mm-hmm. And at the very last second, I'm like, dude, I feel it, man. Let's just go to Gremlins. Yeah, and then I, and then like I got lazy, moment. and then I got lazy, and then you're like, so we're going to go Gremlins? And then I got back into it. I'm like, yeah, we're going to go fucking Gremlins. Yeah. And it was just magic. Man, what a good fucking movie. I think, yeah. The I think enti- it was an epic just getting to the fucking theater. It was like, uh, <laughs> we're hungover as like, shit. We were hungover. Yeah. It was in the middle of a snowstorm. Yeah. Was it a snowstorm? I don't even know. It was know. pretty bad out. We, I live I live on the bottom of a hill. And, we, and if you, anybody knows Montreal, Montreal is like the fucking San Francisco fucking Montre- uh, Montreal. Yeah. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so Montreal is situated on a hill. And I'm at the bottom of the hill, so if there's ever a flood, like, I need a boat. 
and um, we had to go up a hill on a cold fucking snowy day. So you're slipping and we're like, this movie better be worth it. And like all I remember of uh, of Gremlins is being a kid watching it and like to, being an adult, I'm a little snobby. And that says, like, fuck, I don't want to watch a Muppet movie. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I only want to watch Muppet movies. If yeah. I see a horror Christmas mm. Muppet movie, that'd be awesome. Mm. It's like, all right, all you Jews are going to die. <laughs> really want to see that yeah. movie now but uh i think it's just a the matter of um sometimes i, I weird things just entice me to uh, to do certain things like to watch a movie thank you um in this case uh in point uh i sort of got into uh being a joe dante fan and was like interested in seeing more of his sort of movies like we just watched the howling me and you yeah not like with that awesome like trend like man f- seriously i know this howling's is, good eh? this is yeah. a this is an old fucking shoe well i don't even know the expression this is just an old hat at this point like, tw- like, oh, Twilight's so lame. Twilight is really fucking lame. Because when you watch The Howling, you're like, man, that werewolf would have raped the shit out of Bella. It would have been like, no, I like the vampires. Like, well, too bad. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, I think. Just uh, bite her, motherfucker. She won't have a choice at that point. I don't like Twilight. I can't. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, let's just de- bunk the twilight love of anyone else yeah. who actually hears twilight is written by a mormon woman who strongly believes that every woman should be every guy should have like three wives and they should all be devoted to him and fucking like you know b- their existence is to make the man better hence, really hence hence why i ought to watch twilight yeah hence why <laughs> hence why bella is so torn of she can't live a life without one of these fucking boyfriends you know what i mean is like, that why fifteen year old girls are sluts? I guess so. Just it's really it's really teaching fifteen year girls the wrong thing. Like I ha oh man, I don't know what to do. I can't choose one or the other. It's like, hey, how about you be by yourself, develop yourself as a human being, go to school, get to law school, and fucking be somebody. Damn straight. As opposed to just somebody's fucking wife. Yeah. Be somebody. Turn into an Anne Rice and write a better vampire series, please. Yeah, seriously. Fucker. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I can go on as many tangents off in the world, like hence, like you know, all the all these all the greatest female writers had to had to fight for their way, had to fight for even having their name on the book. Like Essie Hinton, who wrote The Outsiders, is a woman, but she wrote a uh, she wrote a book about teenage boys, and she did a better representation than than some guys. than most dudes. Mm-hmm. Well, she knew she knew JD Salin- JD Salinger wrote Who's Catcher that? in the Rye. Okay. Oh yeah, that woman wrote Catcher in the Rye about an emo kid in the fucking forties. You know, mm. so. Ah, oh, whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah, right. A fucking Christmas episode. That's true. Margot Kidder. No, we're past that. I don't know. We're Gremlins. We're fucking like, yeah, the thing is, we're just sitting around here, wasting your time, drinking booze and shit like that. But ah, you're like Scrooge and I'm like the nephew that comes in. It's like, but Mako, it's Christmas Day. And you're like, fuck off. I'm like, Ryan, you're fired. <laughs> Now go to your family and try to support That's Bob them. Cratchit, not oh. the fucking nephew. <laughs> oh, sorry. You know, speaking of which, I love You're that- Bill Murray in the first hour and a half of Scrooge, and I'm Bill Murray in the 10 minutes left of the movie. What, the one that tells the theater to sing? And it's a I TV. tell theaters yeah, to and sing. Yeah, it's a fucking TV movie. Like, it was never in a theater. It's mm. a fucking TV movie. So I guess Bill, someone told Bill Murray that this was going to be on a- in a theater on a larger scale than it no, actually you was. know it, well, bill murray is just a guy that like fucking you don't tell him how to act he'll just act yeah a lot of the shit that you see in the movies is just like i bet you lost in translation was supposed to be a movie about the epidemic and like crisis in the economy and stuff and yeah. Bill murray just turned into what it was we'll probably say this on another <laughs> cast but i'll say it right yeah. now anyway just a, a word out to a word out to uh severe zero hero um, fucking Bobcat Goldflate, which um, you know, this oh, guy in Scrooge. Yeah, this yeah. guy, this guy in the '80s was personified as this big crazy guy with like the funny voice. You know, oh, just, the guy with the you voice. Know, like this, like, oh my, yeah, you know, I'm gonna. Go. And um, and in reality, he's very soft spoken, and he's very quiet, and he directs like these amazing black comedies, mm-hmm. like fantastic. And it's just great to see that like. A guy that was personified as this crazy guy, you know, years later can reinvent himself and do something else. Like it just, it that yeah. goes a lot. Tom Hanks used to be a the goofy guy from the Burbs and yeah, and well, big, yeah, big, big Turner and Hooch, and then now he's the 
is he's turning down roles, you know, yeah. he's like, uh, he's like the Tom, he's yeah. the, the guy to go to. You want to, you want to make a movie legitimate Hanks and or sappy. You call a fucking Tom Hanks. Yeah. Hanks. Damn straight. Okay. So Christmas horror movies, right? <laughs> Fuck. Right. Gremlins is amazing. Gremlins is amazing. So Gre- Scrooge. This and- is, this is like Gremlins is predates fucking um you know cgi and all that these days gremlins would be a bunch of cgi fucking thing mm. the thing back then with pup uh, with um, puppetry and animatronics is that you felt like if you touched them you'd feel some fucking hair and when they ate shit after midnight oh okay, well, you for, could smell it for the four of you in the world who have never seen gremlins gremlins is basically a movie where uh, a father is looking for a present for his son he goes into a sketchy shop in chinatown somewhere and uh the little kid's like hey we need the money and, and the old old man with one white eye is like no no you you are not ready for mogwai and mogwai is a gremlin but in the authentic name mm. so basically the kid sells him it anyway and there's three rules um don't let it eat after midnight Get don't it get it wet. And what's the third one? Uh, don't suck its balls, man. Whatever. It's got a couple of rules, including don't get it wet because it'll multiply. Don't feed after midnight because if you feed after midnight, they turn into these evil little fuckers. Mm-hmm. So he brings it home. and uh, Daylight. Don't get into daylight. Right. So he brings it home and Gizmo, which is the name of the gremlin or the name it's given, mm-hmm. is uh, this adorable little or the guy. Mogwai. And he, um, the Mogwai. And he has this song he goes and it sounds like. Or, you know, less scratchy and mm-hmm. uh, better. Okay. <laughs> and if, you, ha- if you were to kick Howie Mandel in the balls, that's what you'd hear. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds... Oh, Howie Mandel does the voice of Gizmo, yeah. doesn't he? That's why, yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Okay, <laughs> I didn't even fucking... You're blowing my mind, man. You tell... Yeah. You establish the rules, and then you know that the main character is going to fuck it up. Yeah, so, he, 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 so he takes this endangered species and gives it to his dumbass teenage son and you know who fucking ruins everything Corey fucking feldman just comes in knocks over the water spoilers well, obviously I don't know. not whenever and, you bring up Corey feldman you have to expect that something's gonna get ruined. yeah something's gonna get fucked like up. a movie yeah so so anyhow he so comes so long story short they multiply <laughs> they get wet they eat after midnight. They turn into a bunch of monsters. They just take over the fucking town. Mm-hmm. And this is some amazing ana- like animatronics and puppetry Puppet work, yep. back in the day. And uh, Marco and I were just watching this movie and like the entire Our time. jaws we- were dropped. The entire, yeah, the entire time we were watching, we were like, I can't believe how good this is. How come we didn't watch? We watched Bad Santa last year. How come we didn't watch this? I'm like, I can't believe why I don't like this movie. Yeah, this movie's seven bucks everywhere. Mm-hmm. Go buy this fucking movie. It's a classic. It's really well done. And it's got this really incredible scene. I don't want to give it away completely, but the the lovely interest in it tells of the demise of his of her father. Oh, and that's it's pretty fucking dark. That's a brilliant scene. You could watch that over and over again. It's like something I even remembered. It's like an urban legend, even. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So that but was it's so well uh, so, so well taken. I think what makes that movie really special is just like if you're a pure Joe Dante fan, who's a guy. I don't know, like his movies tend to like work more on like um, uh, creature features, you know, like not just horror movies. They're more like creature features. Like uh, he did the first Piranha movie where like it's just brilliantly taken. Jesus Christ, Piranha? Yeah, he's the original. The original Piranha is shitty and dumb as it's supposed to be. That's what he's done. But 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 look, check it it out. Fucking Piranha 2 is done by James Cameron. Like this shitty little Italian franchise Mm -hmm. has been has the most amazing directors. Mm like directing Prana, it Prana is actually uh, not a bad movie it came right after Jaws so it was like trying to like uh, rip that shit off you know what about Orca the Killer Whale that was another Jaws yeah, yeah. every like like they after Jaws came out they try like the studios whenever there's a big movie that makes uh, like a fucking shitload of money studios are like saying all right what else is scary that's underwater cock the puss you know <laughs> You know, which speaking funny it's funny to think of that though like we, we were talking about the um, the asylum uh movie company and now they're just throwing out any shark movie yeah like sharknado Anyways. i'm amazed they haven't made a jaws 5 actually or just revamped it because like it's funny that we're talking yeah. about jaws other than i'm wearing a jaws shirt jaws 4 is sort of a christmas movie because it takes place on christmas oh so. for fuck's sakes <laughs> seriously that is the most cop-out fucking like man Fuck Jaws 4. <laughs> Seriously. I sort of like Jaws 4. Not Fuck in terms you. <laughs> it has my cocaine Everybody in listen there. to this. 
fuck you. That's what they're saying. They're all saying, we wasted money on a Friday night when you're just like at the video store and you can get like Listen, three movies. You can watch it for free on fucking, not even Netflix. Watch it on Google. Netflix doesn't want Jaws 4. <laughs> Jaws 4 has a scene where you have a fucking like inflatable shark kind of like hanging out of like hanging out of like the fucking ocean while it's supposedly getting electrocuted and it's going like it's a dinosaur. It's wicked. Uh, And then you have Michael Caine, the best, the best idea. The best actor, one of the best actors in the world, one of the worst movies in the world. Michael Caine working off a speeding ticket. Yeah. okay, probably so. But uh, he, he does have great moments in there. I like Michael Caine. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, Jaws 4 is a piece of shit. But yeah, fucking, there's a really good stupid scene in that movie. It doesn't movie belong where, on this list. What are what are horror-based movie, uh, horror Christmas movies would you say there are? Uh, horror Christmas movies? Yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, if you're really even thinking back, like horror, uh, I mean, like Christmas movies, some of the better ones are, they have the spooky element, and I'm like, I'm going to get a little serious on you, like, um, both Christmas Carol and fucking uh, It's a Wonderful Life has like weird like angel references and like ghosts. And okay, all that just shit. bringing up It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. In a certain setting, he's going to kill himself. That's right. That's some heavy shit. It's a dark movie, but you know what? That kind of like it, it, I don't, okay. I'm not gonna go like really serious on this because this is like uh, uh, you know like uh, fucking Christmas, uh, not Christmas Carol. Uh, what we were talking about. Fucking, it's Wonderful Life is actually a really good feel good movie and it's a really well done movie and it's like a movie that kind of makes you feel like you changed your life after watching it and if anything that's what Christmas is all about you know it kind of has that weird sense of like redeeming yourself and like re- rejuvenating and all that crazy weird shit that happens on Christmas because like Christmas is a weird time of year and stuff where ghosts come out no wait that's Halloween sorry I'm like I'm kind of like I you know I hate to say this but we all have to admit our faults to some degree, I feel a little self-important sometimes w- without realizing it, mm. but only in a sense that I'm like, if I didn't exist, what would happen? Oh, and then, yeah. And then there's a self-derogatory part of myself that realizes that it really wouldn't change anything. <laughs> <laughs> like the world would still be there without me, of course, and so much would be unaffected by it. <laughs> can you ever can you ever imagine like Christmas as an actual like um James Stewart type of person standing over a bridge ready to like jump off itself and it's like if I kill myself now or all those Christmas movies or movies that have are based around Christmas would they change (laughs) (laughs) you think of Die Hard if like yeah if Christmas killed itself and like would Die Hard 1 still be good well we have to I don't know I I, I can't talk about Die Hard without Jay he'll fucking kill me I'm not gonna talk about Die Hard a lethal weapon. It's oh man, story. that fucking Jay would kill me, man. <laughs> That's like his fucking blood. That's what he does. Like he loves that movie. Mm, all right. So Ebenezer Marco. Mar Ebenezer Marco here hates Christmas in the sense that like all the I guess it's the inflicted joy you're supposed to feel and shit. I, I feel uh, no, my my true hatred towards Christmas is just a like the consumerism of it. So you're like Charlie Brown. I, I have not watched that. No, Charlie like, Brown was pissed off at all the consumerism. He's just like, ah, everybody's all about the money. Yeah. And, and as a result, he's fucking bummed out. And when they asked him to get a Christmas tree, instead of getting a big plastic one, he got a real one that was just like, that was little like a piece little of piece of shit. shit. And they're like, oh, all he needs is a little love. Mm-hmm. You know what he needs a little love? My ego. Seriously? <laughs> Maybe that was a Charlie maybe, Brown thing. Maybe that. Maybe maybe Jimmy Stewart needed a little love to his ego, and it's a wonderful life. No, he he just oh, was. Uh, oh, everything I, was going wrong with him. I think I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> yeah, I have to watch that movie again. It's like, shut up, you emo fuck. <laughs> you got kids. You selfish bastard. You have children. He was, he killing was, yourself is he's like going bankrupt. Killing your, <laughs> fine. You're going bankrupt, and everything sucks. And that. Fucking old cripple did it too. He's the one who stole the money. He never got what was coming to him. There is no clarity in that fucking movie. Yeah, but it's not. It's it's more about the Christmas spirit. Man. Fuck that. I want Batman to punch him in his evil fucking face. Well, you got you got the alternate ending in the best of Dana Carvey. Uh, Chris, uh, it's a Wonderful Life story. Yeah, where they they beat the shit out of the cripple. <laughs> the whole town. Oh fuck me. <laughs> they beat the shit out of him really. Bad. All right. So, uh, um, Mar- so Marco uh, hates Christmas for those reasons. The only reason why I ever hated Christmas back in the day was because um, I didn't like the music. 
I didn't. Oh, like, wow. I didn't like the Pat, like the fucking um, not Sinatra. Sinatra was pretty dope, but uh. You know, well, the other, he's a the crooner. Other, yeah. what, the I'll other guy. One thing that's cool about Sinatra is okay. just because he's like fucking high on coke or like drinking a lot of champagne and has like three hookers sucking his balls. And fucking the Rat Pack was like Motley Crue, yeah. in fucking like fifties. You know? But they they, 40s, did it, they did it with style in terms of like they didn't have to dress up as women to get pussy. Yeah, uh, I I don't know. It's just like you you look at Dean Martin or uh, or. Uh, fucking uh, Sinatra and they're just crooning their way into like well well or outside no that's Bing Crosby isn't it no like you know like back in the day like I do like uh, I do like I'm so sad I've come to and like that shit make girls pussies fucking wet back in the day like your grandmother's snatch was like fucking dosed in pussy juice because of like fucking crooners and stuff Mm. like now it's emos being the same way but instead of like crooning like uh, they're more like and they were I'm so no, they were men too. Like after an emo kid has sex with a girl, he cries until she leaves. Like Sinatra mm-hmm. would be like, "All right, Dame, get out of here, leave." <laughs> I gotta go. I got. I got mafia. I gotta, people I gotta to go have with. drinks with the boys. Yeah, not that I idolize that a uh, level of chauvinism, but at the same time, I, I kind of look at that stuff kind of like I can never be like got, that. When so got, I worship it because I can never be like that. It's like, mm. it's like you know, I, I can never be Batman, so that's why I worship him. I'm like, oh. When you got Ray yeah. Liotta playing you in a movie about him, Ray oh, Li- oh you, you have to watch a movie called The Brat Pack, uh, the, the Brat Pack, The Rat Pack, which is Fuck like, me, there's a movie called The Rat Pack? Yeah. It's a... Uh, Son it's of a bitch, Ray Liotta, why Ray Liotta's this? fucking uh, Sinatra... What's his name's Dean Martin, uh, Joe Montana. Who's Joe Montana? All right, have you seen the third Godfather? No, Joey Zaza. That's why um, I, I okay, okay, okay. I'm all not right. I'm not standing on a bridge debating killing myself because okay. I haven't seen Godfather uh, three. You should watch all the Godfathers and make your I own judgment. I haven't seen Godfather one and two. I just I saw the first ten minutes of three and I decided not to. I think three is a fine movie. I, I'm actually wanting to look up like why is three so bad in everybody's opinion. Anyways, um, I'll, uh, here's a better thing. To, Joe Montana also did the voice for Fat uh, Tony for, in The Simpsons. And okay. He's a, so he's that guy. He's like, hey, uh, how you doing? So he's Dean Martin. Um, Don Cheadle is... What's the truck? Damn it, you. And, and just Don, say, Don Cheadle oh, is Sammy, Sammy Davis, Davis Jr. Jr. Exactly. Okay. Ah. There's like a fourth member of the Rat Pack I never remember. He's like the George Harrison of the bunch. Yeah, that one's played yeah. by Robert De Niro. Fuck no. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. All right. So, right, so we went Christmas. Apart. Yeah, Christmas. Holy shit. It's going to be like two hours of nonsense. Um, um, Christmas so, music sucks unless you look up. Um, but here's a new section where we're going to give some props. Good Christmas it's called, music. It's called Christmas music that doesn't suck. Christmas music that doesn't suck. Um, so Christmas music that doesn't suck. I gotta say, the first fucking Christmas album that ever made me fucking excited for Christmas, like that scene in Home Alone where he's faking a party to make sure they don't break into oh, the house. Yeah. It looks like the best party ever, although it's completely fake, which is funny because no Christmas party has ever been that fun in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if anybody's having fun at a Christmas party, they're usually faking it. <laughs> yeah, or they're usually <laughs> fucked. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Eggnog. So basically, the song that made me think of this or the album that made me think of this was the uh, Brian Setzer Orchestra Boogie Woogie Christmas, and this has that song, his version of Jingle Bells, which is in all those movie like Jingle All the Way of Arnold Schwarzenegger mm-hmm. and all this shit. Um, it's it's just fucking rocking. It's him and a big band orchestra playing these Christmas classics in an awesome rockabilly big band type of way. Mm -hmm. And this is not like your grandfather's music. This is shit that you can just pop on no matter what age you are and you're just like, fuck, Christmas rules. This is bopping. Man, if you love the Stray Cats. Yeah, if you love, even if you don't love the Stray Cats, it's just fucking awesome to hear. Yeah, I defy anybody who doesn't like fucking toe toe tap to any of that shit because then they're just like fucking Scrooges. And then then there's the uh, awesomeness of Winter Songs by Rob Halford. And, yeah, there you go. I was and, waiting for you to talk yeah, about that. And and this album, this album starts way more metal. And in you know when he talked about it, and Rob, you'll never hear this, but if you ever fucking did, sorry for the bad impression. But it's like, oh yeah, well, I always liked the I always liked the idea that um, you know, in the morning you're all excited and you salt out all fast, and then near the end of the day you just slow down and just 
you know, get really into the mood of the family. And it and when you listen to the album, it starts off really fast and progressively gets a little slower, and then it ends on a really slow one. But my favorite tune on that entire record is We Three Kings. Now, if you've never fucking heard this, you go on YouTube right now, type in Rob Halford, Winter Songs, We Three Kings, and not not the fucking live versions. I yeah, really go, think go the uh, fucking studio version, it'll rock your fucking socks. I think uh, you have uh, anybody who hasn't even heard We Three Kings, the original, should do their homework and hear that song because that itself is a good song. With the power of Rob Halford singing that, yeah, is just like a We wicked. Three Kings of that Assets Fry. Like, just oh, I got goosebumps. Fucking oh man, it's wicked. Mm. So, those two records really stand, in my opinion. I don't know, it's um, Twist is just a rabbit, like a metal album, but it's kind of like more novelty. I guess, like, you know, Come On, You Faithful sounds a lot like We're Not Gonna Take It, so... Yeah, well, so, everything sounds like We're Not yeah, Gonna Take It from no, like, no, Twisted but, Sisters. But because it's, um, it's from a joke, I read in D. Snyder's book, basically, where he said, so isn't it funny how We're Not Gonna Take It, it's the same thing as Come On, You Faithful? And he's just like, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? And then his friend said, you know, Oh, come on, you faithful, joyous, and we're not gonna take it. Holy no, shit. No, we are gonna... T- and, like, and he had this revelation, like, holy shit. So when they did a Christmas album, they fed into that joke, mm. and they made it. But I've heard a lot of shitty Christmas albums in my day, too. All right. Those are the two ones that really stick out. There's a ton of shitty ones. Um, But my Christmas band was inspired like have you ever seen the holiday hooligans i'll have will. to say if you want a good time during the holidays check out the holiday who will look again i think that's enough for the christmas show today oh well so, christmas so this was sn this is sngr sexy nerd galactic radio or ryan stick and the special guest mark of a j zero will be with us next time to talk about Leave action, weapon. action movies that are set shamelessly set on Christmas, though don't need it to be Christmas, to work. This is Sexy Nerd Galactic Radio, signing off, motherfuckers. Sexy Nerd Galactic Radio.